If you clicked on this video, you know what's up guys. It is the Criterion season, more specifically, the July Barnes & Noble sale, where everything Criterion related is 50% off. If you don't know the gist, hi, I'm Bill, and I like Criterions, I guess you can tell. And I'm going to be spinning you a web of the five underrated Criterion films I think you should personally own. Yes, you, hi, you, I'm talking to you. Hey buddy, how you doing? This is the list. I'm not gonna dilly-dally any longer. You know me here. The most widely accessible film, I think, of these five. This is spine number 794. This is Inside Lewin Davis from Joel and Ethan Cohen. Those are the Cohen brothers. You know, the guys who did Big Lebowski, Fargo. This film, in my opinion, is so much different from the remainder of their filmography. I think it stands alone as a very unique uh, portrait of American folk music. It stars Oscar Isaac as the titular character, Lewin Davis, who is a struggling musician trying to make it big, just trying to live, if you will. He moves from couch to couch, he does a bit of surfing across the U.S. with a very eclectic arrangement of Cohen-esque characters. I think this is a beautiful film. I think it details the life of of a struggling artist very accurately, very well, and very real. Thank you very much. That is Lewin Davis. Next up, we're going really light here. We've got spine number 904. This is a comedy from Alexander Payne. This is Election, starring Matthew Broderick and a very young Reese Witherspoon. If you haven't heard of this, Election follows two characters, Tracy Flick, played by Reese Witherspoon, who's a very uh, narcissistic uh, high schooler trying to become the class president. Meanwhile, the teacher, the social studies teacher, Jim McAllister, played by Matthew Broderick, is has this scornful vengeance against her. He hates <laughs> that she always wins, and he wants the most popular dumb jock in the school to win against her. So it's this, it's this vengeful, uh, I don't know why I say vengeful, it's just this whole obsessive need to win, and it shows just how insane these people are and how far they're willing to go just for a simple high school presidency. You know, it's not like they're becoming the dictator of a country. This is very mundane, but this film also draws real-world political parallels, which I think is very interesting and fun. And all around, I think Election is a great movie to check out if you haven't. So there you go. That's Election. Next up, I want to pull out a Netflix original, but this is one that maybe not all of you have seen yet. This is spine number 1091. This is Beasts of No Nation, directed by Kerry Joji Fukunaga. Now, I personally love this film. I think it's really good. It is a perfect portrait on war and the violence the carnage, the chaos that ensues within it. This follows child soldiers in Africa, more specifically one child soldier's journey, and it stars Idris Elba as the leader of the child soldiers. It's just so insane, it's surreal, it's very real, it feels just dreadfully terrible and a very honest portrait of a side of a country that we don't really get a lot of stories about. There's not a lot of stories centered around African conflict in mainstream films. So yeah, this is Beasts of No Nation. I think this is a very good, powerful film. I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. All right, transition. We've got a first foreign film for you to get into. I know foreign films could be daunting for some of you. Some of you are terrified of it. Hey, it's okay. I'm here. I'm here to comfort you, console you, and tell you that this is a perfect foreign film for the major audience to get into. The average American Joe like you. So, this is spine number 1073. This is a Bong Joon-ho film, Memories of Murder. I know what you're thinking, hey, this guy did Parasite. Fuck yeah, he did Parasite, and this film is just as good, if not more of a masterpiece than Parasite, in my opinion. Made in 2003, this is Bong Joon-ho's sophomore feature, and I think it's so powerfully done. It tells the story of 
these detectives from a small town who are somewhat incompetent trying to figure out who this serial killer is who kills women and stalks them at night. Now, this is based on a true story and it's insane because they made the film hoping that the serial killer will watch it. It's a very good, very powerful film of Korean cinema. I personally love Korean cinema. It's some, one of my favorite countries to make movies. I think they get themes and character development across so well. You can find a character at the beginning of a film that's so unlikable, but give them a very redeeming arc towards the end. And that's exactly what this film centers around, are these really bad cops who honestly shouldn't be cops. They should be arrested. <laughs> We see these characters go through a multitude of emotions, a multitude of quests and um, intrigue. I really like this movie. Memories of Murder. God, you should check it out. It is a fucking epic serial killer crime film. Spine number 196. This is the most artful, uh, artsy-fartsy foreign film I could recommend to you now that I'm currently loving. This is Hiroshima Monomore from Alain Reznais or Reznaz, something like that. This is a French New Wave film, actually. The first feature from Elaine, and it's one of the most influential films, I think, regarding romance. A, it's about a French actress and a Japanese architect who meet each other, they mingle, they engage in a very brief but powerful love affair. And it takes place in post-war Hiroshima and their mutual infatuation, their love for each other, impels them to exercise their own scarred memories of love and suffering. It's a really, really good uh, look at how trauma can affect us and how we have to express that to someone we want to become vulnerable with. I think it's really good. It's an important film for anyone to watch who deals with a relationship trauma or anything like that it's something that i think anyone should watch honestly all of these anyone should watch but this one especially it weaves past and presence very well and just again shows that anguish that pain and how we need to trust and love just like that that's the list those are the five films guys please let me know what are you going to pick up at the barnes and noble sale personally i'm going to tell you my top five from one brother to another. All right, my five are going to be Afterlife, Raging Bull, Pink Flamingos, Worst Person in the World, and Yee Yee. You best believe I'm going to be making an in-store vlog and pickup of the Criterions. Day one, baby. Look out for that. July 1st to July 31st. That's where the sale's taking place. As always, have a good day. Watch a good film. It's been Bill, guys. Bye-bye.